All right, everyone, calm down, calm down. This is almost certainly not World War Three, despite a a genuine wave of hysteria and panic kicked up over two presumably Russian missiles landing in Poland just a couple hours ago, with a straight-up deluge of articles arriving from all sorts of sources, large and small, mainstream and non-mainstream, and a lot from internet commentariat who really should know better than this, honestly. and. Here's the thing, normally I wouldn't even comment on something like this at this point until we had a lot more facts, but forgive my hubris, but I feel the need to put out a little bit of a public service announcement here and say that this is probably not the catastrophe that a lot of people are making it out to be, especially as there is some straight up fake news misinformation in the mix as well. This being an excellent example of it, Russian missiles crossed into Poland, killing two United States says. This is a lie. A straight up lie. And it is based on a senior US intelligent official who spoke on condition of anonymity because of the sensitive nature of the situation. Now, as this, as I'm going to play to you right now, is the United States' official position on the matter right now. As I mentioned, uh, right now, uh, we are aware of the press reporting on this. Uh, we have no information at this time to corroborate those reports, but again, are, are taking them seriously and looking into them. And so um, I will make sure that we provide you with any updates as soon as we have them. So no, there does not appear to be, at the time of recording, any official or otherwise United States statement to say that this was an attack on Poland. Nor does what we have seen from the site appear to indicate this either. So this was the uh, the tweet that kicked it all off from Visegrad24. Breaking. Two Russian stray missiles, that's a rather important thing right there by the way, have just hit a farm in Prezevodov? Question mark. On the Polish side of the Polish-Ukrainian border killing two Poles. Polish PM Morawiecki and President Duba have summoned a crisis meeting of the National Security Bureau, NATO Article 5 question mark. No, almost certainly not. NATO Article 5 is the article that states that attack on one is an attack on all, but it needs to be an actual attack. If this is going to trigger anything, it will probably be of Article 4 which is the article where a country can call all of the other member states to a conclave, a meeting, to discuss whether or not uh, security concern is real. Basically to ask the question, was this an attack or not, if it isn't obvious. And currently, it is not obvious. So this appears to be the impact crater right here. You can see a tractor, you can see the crater itself, you can see the uh, the kind of railway structure here, and a cart that has been tipped over. Uh, we also have a second angle here on video of the same place. We can see the tractor, the cart, the, uh, the railway, and the crater itself. Now, before we have a look at this, because there's a lot of uh, very interesting information we can glean from all of this, we have to have a look at where this happened. So, according to Wikipedia, the village is right down here, so on the Polish-Ukrainian border. So, how far away is that? Okay, so we have a map here that lets me measure the distance. So, the closest launch point for a Russian weapon would probably be here, for example, and to round about this area, which is 744 kilometers. But um, let's also see the closest point in currently occupied uh, Russian, excuse me, Ukrainian territory. Um, let's hypothesize a launcher all the way out here, for example. How far would that be? That would be about 713 kilometers. There is also the potential for a submarine launch cruise missile as well, which, uh, look at that. Um, like this would be incredibly dangerously close for a Russian submarine, but for just and giggles, which would be 683 kilometers. So 
at the absolute closest, we are looking at well over 600 kilometers. This is important because it helps us determine what kind of a weapon this might have been. There has been a lot of speculation going around on this already, a whole lot, including everything from uh, United States false flags to reports of Ukrainian S-300s landing in the area, and apparent uh, pictures of the wreckage of what does kinda look like an S-300, and of course this being an attack by Russia deliberately on Poland, and also that this was simply the aftermath of a much larger attack on Ukraine, where some of the warheads went but, um, as they mentioned here, stray. So, for a weapon to reach all the way to where this is, it would have to have a pretty damn long range. There is only a relative handful of weapons in the Russian arsenal that has this kind of range. So we are looking at a long range cruise missile, uh, either a caliber launched from presumably a submarine or an SCC-8 or a 9M? Uh, which is the land-launched rough equivalent. These cruise missiles would both have the range to get here. In fact, they would have more than enough range. But they also carry 450 kilogram warheads, which you can see here. This, and bear you in mind, I am no military expert, so if somebody else comes along later and says, no, 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 this is actually the kind of damage it would cause, take my wording here with a massive pinch of salt. But this does not look like the explosion of a 450 kilogram warhead. You can see here, the crater itself is large, but the railway lines is largely intact. The timbers are largely intact, if scorched. The cart itself is ob has obviously been tipped, clearly, but it too is remarkably intact. In fact, even the tires are still inflated, as you can see here. Uh, you can also see that this uh, connection thing here, obviously in metal, of course, is also pretty much intact and the car itself has only been tipped over slightly. The tractor has been buried in some dirt, as you can see, but it too is upright. Now, a 450 kilogram warhead would probably have sent this and the tractor just flying straight up, and it would almost certainly have bent the hell out of this at the very least. Like, this would not be here. <laughs> Um, this would have gone flying, I'm pretty damn certain, in fact. But what could cause this damage is, again, just that. A stray missile. Now, what can happen to weapons when they're fired is that they lose communications with the launch center. A lot of these modern weapons are actually guided onto target, particularly in the case of very long-range cruise missiles, which this probably was, depending on how far it eventually flew before landing. If it loses communication with the launch center, and it also loses guidance as well, there is every possibility that it could simply have been flying dead and dumb until it landed somewhere. So I believe that this is a far more likely explanation than it being an actual strike on Poland. There is also the idea that if this was indeed part of a larger launch on Ukraine, again, it seems to back up the idea that this was accidental, it was a mistake, uh, a malfunction, probably, rather than any kind of deliberate provocative action. Now, of course, there is always the possibility of mind games, sure, maybe it was uh, deliberate that they rigged one warhead to uh, go rogue, or, well, more correctly, the missile to go rogue and land in Poland. It's possible. But Occam's razor seems to suggest that this was a, well, straight up again, malfunction, and would therefore almost certainly not invoke Article 5, as again, it needs to be an actual attack. Now, you can also argue that this depends on NATO's definition, absolutely. Could they use this as an excuse? Possibly. But again, exceptionally unlikely. So, everyone, just, uh, you know, take a step back. Take calm down a little bit. And uh, we'll have to wait until we see more uh, coming out of here, because 
there is also, of course, the possibility that it was actually a S300. Now, the S300 is a uh, surface-to-air missile. It is not made to strike ground targets. But it could have been fired by the Ukrainians against incoming Russian missiles to try and intercept them, and the weapon could have missed, and it too could have gone rogue. They could have lost control of it, and it could have landed in Poland too. Now, the, uh, the pictures I have seen suggesting an S300 are quite dubious, so I don't lend that idea all that much credibility, but it is yet another angle that should be considered before we leave to any conclusions here. Again, particularly considering what is at stake. Article 5 is no joke, and even if one would want NATO to intervene, again, this is an incredibly big deal that would mean an enormous escalation of the war, which I hope none of us really wants. But, no, we'll have to wait and see on that, I suppose. So, uh, that has been my own little, um, selfish uh, public service announcement, as, uh, I, I can't help it. When I, when I see, like, stuff like this, which is, again, this... Say what you want about misinformation, there has been a lot said about it, and a lot of it has been absolute, complete and utter bullshit, designed purely to push a very specific narrative, but this is actually kind of dangerous. You probably should not be accepting the word of uh, anonymous senior intelligence officials when we're talking about an activation of Article 5, in my opinion. As oh, my view on this conflict has always been that I hope it stops as quickly as possible, rather than grows larger. Anywho, until next time, hopefully on a brighter subject, I have been Arch, thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.